The following dramatization presents two ill-structured scenarios. It's not intended to model, but rather to promote critical reflection and group discussion. The scenario presents an elderly woman named Doris who has advanced ALS. Due to muscle weakness associated with the bulbar nerves, she can no longer speak or swallow. She is concerned about how she might die and is worried about the growing burden she believes is being placed on her family. She presents her physician with a note requesting help to hasten her death. As you watch the segment, consider the following questions. What is happening? What issues does it raise? What emotions come to your awareness? What implications does it have for how we practice? I used to love the mornings, but since I've gotten so sick, I hate mornings. They're always followed by very long days. Days of choking, followed by sleepless nights. I can't remember when I've had a decent night's sleep. I'm so sick of not being able to talk anymore. Using sign language and writing notes, it's just all so hard. I'm a burden for my daughters. I'm a burden for my whole family. I'm sure that they'll all be glad to see me go. They must be getting tired of coming here and looking after me. I'm giving this note to my doctor today. I want it all to end. I don't want to live a moment longer like this. She must have some medications that she can give me to make it fast and painless. I'm sure she'll understand. Doris, you mean this? You know I can't do this. I understand how hard this must be on you. This illness, it, it takes its toll on one physically as well as emotionally. What did she say in the note? Don't worry. Doris, we're all here for you. We're all here to make you as comfortable as we can. Now, let's see how we're doing today. Doris, you mean this? This illness takes its toll not only physically, but emotionally. What did she say? I think she'd like you to see this as well. It's addressed to me as well as the family. I'm a burden to everyone, my daughters and my grandchildren. I've outlived my time. I want this to be over. Can we speed this up? By speeding things up, you're asking me to end your life? Any pain? Some pain? Where? We can give you something for the pain and it'll make you feel more comfortable. Grandma, you're not a burden to the family. I love coming to visit you and look after you. Please don't give up, Graham. I know this must be hard for you, but we all love you so much. And besides, you promised to be there for me when I graduate from college. This is a difficult time, but I know your granddaughter enjoys your visits. And both of your daughters Talk about how important it is to have the opportunity to still spend time with you. Listen to Doc Hildy, Grandma. What she says is true. You're not a burden. And it might be selfish of us, but we don't want you to go. We love you so much. 
I understand the choking is tiring, but we can help you with that. I'll write a new prescription and orders for the home care nurse. We can make you more comfortable. And the breathing too. I, I can give you medication that will help you with your shortness of breath. We can start right today and see how you do with it. Just tell us when you need help and when you're uncomfortable. As the segment illustrates, some people worry about how they will die and if they are being a burden on their family. They may explore what can be done or simply request something to accelerate resolution of the situation. As a result, care providers can be faced with difficult moral, ethical and legal questions. In a situation where a patient is not cognitively impaired but is also not easily able to verbally express their concerns, it's helpful to find other means of communicating so issues and fears can be properly explored. Listening to the deeper meaning of a request and discussing the suffering can help address the underlying issues in a way that can be addressed. It can be helpful to appropriately share these concerns with a family so that they might address the issues that only a family can answer.